Bootstrap provides an extensive set of utility classes. These classes responsively style, align, and space out our content. They are divided into the categories shown here. We apply utility classes using an HTML elements class attribute. Let's take a look at some of the commonly used utility classes. These utility classes align text. In each of these cases, we set the paragraph elements class attribute to the name of the utility class. Text start aligns the text to the left. Text center centers the text. And text end aligns the text to the right. There are color utility classes for coloring text. We saw the set of bootstrap colors in the documentation earlier in this course. Here are some examples. Text primary is blue. Text success is green. And text danger is red. Here are some font and background utility classes. FS and a number sets the font size. The number is similar to the HTML heading element sizes, with 1 being the largest and 6 being the smallest. FW in a value sets the font weight. Values include bold, light, and italic. BG in a color name sets the background color. We can use any of the standard color values, primary, success, info, light, dark, and so on. Notice on this last paragraph that we've set the class attribute to multiple classes. We can add any number of classes separated with a space to combine styles for an element. Bootstrap also has its own responsive margin and padding classes. They both follow a similar syntax. The first letter is what. Use M for margin or P for padding. The second character is where. Use S for start, which is left, T for top, E for end, which is right, and B for bottom. To combine values, use X for the horizontal or X axis, which is start and end. Use Y for the vertical or Y axis, which is top and bottom. Leaving the second character blank adjusts the margin or padding on all sides. The third character is how much. The specified number is some percentage of the bootstrap spacer, which by default is 1 rem, or 16 pixels. So opposite of the font size, 1 is the smallest size, and 5 is the largest size. Specifying 1 is a quarter of a rem, 2 a half a rem, 3 is 1 rem, and so on as shown. There is also a value of auto, which tells the browser to set a suitable margin to fill the available space. This example sets the top margin to 2, or 0.5 rem. Bootstrap provides border classes. The border class turns on the border. Use border and a location to specify where the border is displayed. Specifying the border and a number defines the width of the border in pixels and use border with a color to set the border color. There is also a set of rounded classes to round the border corners. Let's try out some of these utility classes. Here again is VS Code, just as we left it, with the Pet Cafe folder open and editing the index.html file. Go Live is running, and we see the home page in the browser. Let's arrange the windows so we have the editor on the left and the browser on the right. In VS Code, scrolling up, let's add a color for the entire body of the page. On the body element, we'll add the class attribute and set it to BG Light. That sets the background to a very light gray color. Let's give our header section a darker background color for contrast. On the header element, let's add the class attribute and set it to BG Secondary. That sets the background to a darker gray color. Nice. But our menu text is a bit difficult to read. We'll fix that a little later. But let's fix the figure caption now. On the figure caption, add a class attribute and set the text color to white. That stands out nicely against the darker background. Next, let's add a little separation around the header using padding. On the header element, set the padding top to 4 and the padding start to 4. That adds padding on the top and left. 
We want a little separation between the header and the main element. We add the class attribute to the main element and set the padding top to 4. Scrolling down, let's color our headings as well. In the H1 element, we'll add a class and set it to Text Secondary. And do the same for the H3 here. Class equals Text Secondary. Lastly, let's add a little styling to set the footer apart from the rest of the page. Scrolling down, we add the class attribute to the footer element. We'll set a top border, border color, and a top margin of 4. And let's make the text a bit lighter using font weight light. We can't see the border right now because it's the same color as the background. We'll fix that shortly. Feel free to try out some of the other classes we learned in this lesson. We'll use more of these utility classes throughout this course. Our web page continues to look a bit better. Let's leave our window layout exactly as it is for now and move on to custom styles. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe.